Now let's come back and see this concept that is coagulation or precipitation. So simple words. So coagulation or precipitation both are similar. Don't get confused in the exam please or precipitation. Precipitation. Now let us see what actually is precipitation. Let's suppose <coughs> in your beaker uh, you have already seen precipitation reactions. Isn't it? Now when I speak about colloidal particles, colloidal particles what do they have? They either have the positively charged, they form positively charged colloidal particles or negatively charged. So now if I have to take out or remove that charge and make it into coagulate, I want to remove that charge from the colloidal particles and finally form aggregates. I want them to combine and form a precipitate in the test tube. So what should I do? What should you do that process of coagulating or precipitating of colloidal particles is called coagulation okay simple I said the same thing let's come back and write so important thing is if I have to write in simpler words in the exam simpler words is removal of charges and formation of aggregates aggregates means precipitate right uh, formation of aggregates or PPT is called coagulation or precipitation. So if I have to write proper way in the exam, just put it in inverted commas. Oh, coagulation is this is the keyword in the exam. Settling down, settling down of colloidal particles. Settling down of colloidal particles. So I'm trying to settle down the colloidal particles. Is called coagulation or precipitation precipitation okay done this is done so now if i have to coagulate a precipitate i have to find out uh, like follows different procedures so the met different methods for coagulating or removing the charge is i'm going to teach you those so in the exam they going to ask you explain or uh, explain the different methods for coagulating or precipitating your colloidal salt the first important thing is electrophoresis we have already studied this what is happening in electrophoresis you're finding the movement of colloidal particles to the respective electrodes yes under electric current right let's write that we have, i've already taught this in the previous video watch that but what is the concept concept is movement of charged colloidal particles under applied field watch the earlier video you will find that under applied electric field okay so what did i say i said <clears throat> positive charge positive uh, charge goes to a positively charged colloid positively charged colloid goes to which one we said it goes to cathode and your negatively charged colloid charged colloid goes to anode that's it simple isn't it this is your uh, uh, electrophoresis i already showed you diagrammatically now both what will happen they will go to the respective electrodes once they go to the respective electrodes they get they combine together you know all the aggregates will come together and they finally get precipitated there so are we not precipitating that are we not coagulating that that is what is the procedure so they go to the respective electrodes and get precipitated if you're not writing not able to write coagulated right precipitated okay done now let's come back to mixing of oppositely charged uh, salt particles suppose if i've already i've already shown you this charged particles what suppose if i have um, silver nitrate to this i'm going to add potassium iodide the same story again silver iodide and potassium nitrate so what do you get you are going to get silver iodide plus kno3 now here you have two possibilities what are the two possibilities if you have this silver iodide which is formed both the combinations done here if you have uh, i minus coming this will become a negative sol suppose if you have ag plus coming and attacking this becomes a negative sol and this becomes a positive sol yes or no yes that so now what i what are you finding i have two opposite charges present in the sol solution i can easily 
take them together bring them closer together and opposite opposite charges attract and finally they coagulate together the same thing i have explained in another way also suppose if i take silver nitrate and i'm going to add sodium um, uh, hydroxide okay uh, no the silver nitrate yes this would be a better example i believe you've already got the charges if i take further it will become a double layer so both the charges together i can coagulate them easily done let's come back and see dialysis so what is dialysis what is the main important thing in dialysis technique you require two important one the colloidal solution done so here in dialysis you are going to take the whole colloidal, colloidal solution in a beaker here you have your water flow now for this you need a dialyzing membrane or animal membrane or a parchment paper so you want to take that animal membrane right in the form of a pot or something right a layer just to show you the shape in this particular thing you are going to take the colloidal sol colloidal solution so this is your parchment membrane or animal membrane animal membrane so now what happens you you have continuous water flow into this 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 water flow yes now you have your colloidal particles inside now during dialysis what happens first important thing is <coughs> yes observe carefully the, from the colloidal solution all the molecules and ions yes from here because the colloidal particle size is very large that is greater than 1000 nanometers so the leftover other than colloidal particles the leftover molecules or we call it as crystalloids so molecules or ions they move from the parchment membrane into the uh, beaker where you have water the dispersion medium so molecules or ions move out move out of animal membrane why are they moving because the particle size is very very small not com compared to colloidal the size is very small they can easily move out of this membrane yes let's see move out of the animal membrane so what is left in the parchment paper what is left in the bag or what is left in the animal membrane it is only basically your colloidal sol so colloidal uh, not sol i have to say uh, coll colloidal particles so colloids are retained in the membrane okay now ma'am how are you coagulating now what happens is when you are continuously or doing the dialysis again and again and again that is called persistent dialysis so now what happens when i do persistent dialysis means continuous dialysis to this so persistent dialysis your colloidal particle whatever is there gets concentrated when it gets concentrated what happens one colloidal particle because of the opposite charges one gets closer to the other the other gets closer to together finally they form a precipitate or coagulate so due to persistent dialysis coagulation occurs are you finding this yes so this is these are the first three methods let us come back and do the other three so remember one important thing your concept you have to write you have to finally show how they get precipitated this is your concept i'm finally showing how it is precipitated this is your concept i'm dialyzing i'm taking out all the crystalloids of the impurities and the leftover colloidal i'm concentrating it and finally forming aggregates so let us come back and see the next coagulation of precipitation techniques so i said this is your boiling boiling so boiling what is the important concept here now when you boil or when you increase the temperature so what will happen in the colloidal collisions will increase okay this will increase collisions when this increases collisions what is going to happen one colloidal particle or dispersed particle hits to the other one hits to the other finally what will happen they come together they aggregate and finally coagulate a precipitate so increases collisions boy increased temperature means nothing but boiling okay increases collisions when collision increases what happens yes simple <coughs> they form aggregates or coagulate or 
precipitate okay come now as form precipitate in the test tube done so that's your concept now let me come back and explain the addition of electrolytes so now earlier also we have studied suppose if i have to i have to uh, coagulate the particular uh, uh, what do you say colloid using an electrolyte same example i'm taking suppose if i take silver nitrate and i'm going to add ki now i'm going to add excess amount of this now agno3 i'm going to add excess amount so when i add double displacement reaction here what do you get you're going to get two products here it means two types of colloidal charges what first one silver iodide forms agi here also silver iodide done now suppose if i take excess amount of this <coughs> if if i uh, take this iodine comes and attacks forms a negatively charged sol the other way if this particular concept i said this is excess amount so silver comes and attacks this is a positively charged sol now what this does is this particular uh, negatively charged sol is going to attract your uh, potassium from the medium it, this is already there in the dispersion medium isn't it so after forming a negative sol and after forming a positive sol like this now this overall charge is negative this is going to attract a positively charged potassium now observe carefully now this is your positively charged this is going to attract a negatively charged iodine now observe carefully the negative and positive together gets neutralized yes and finally coagulates so this becomes now now what from here this becomes neutral from here if you see this becomes neutral so when it becomes neutral so what will happen this will lead to coagulation or precipitation this is also neutral or coagulation or precipitation that's it so we are going to learn now hardy shells rule based on this concept only hope you would have understood one is excess one is uh, lesser than that and you get a uh, negative ion if i minus comes in attacks you get positive ion if ag plus comes in attacks then now once this is negative we'll try to drag the oppositely charged cation from the medium this is positive this is going to drag the opposite charged ion uh, iodine that is i minus from the uh, medium and finally they coagulate they come together and coagulate or precipitate so these are the different methods for coagulation of lyophobic colloids